What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Zeb, and it's good to see you tonight for a virtual life study with the Rehab Christian Center. I am excited to be here and uh, certainly praying that you have had a phenomenal week so far. I know it is all only just Tuesday, um, but if your week has been like mine, it feels like it's Sunday already. Uh, it has been a busy 48 hours, um, but certainly praying that God has been blessing you all week long. Listen, uh, we are right on time this uh, tonight because I want to get into what might be one of the most powerful lessons of this entire relationship series that we have started this month. Uh, tonight, we're going to deal with toxicity, and um, this is going to be powerful, and I can't wait to share it. So let's go through all of our networks. Let's start with Facebook. Good evening to you, Facebook, those of you that are tuned in. Uh, via Facebook. It is good to see you and certainly praying uh, that you have had a phenomenal week uh, so far. Uh, do me a favor, hit that like love button and then share this video. I want you to share this video. I want you to start a watch party. I want you to tag five people on Facebook and tell them to tune in now. Uh, tell them we're going to talk about Jody and Yvette and it's going to make a whole lot of sense. So tell them to tune in right now. Facebook tag five people. Uh, and then make sure you say good evening in the chat box. If you are on the chat line typing, which you should be, we take notes in the comments section. Um, make sure you say good evening to everyone. It is entirely rude to come to church and not say hello. All right. Would you do that for me, Facebook? I would really appreciate it. Let's get this number rising quickly because I need all 45 minutes of my time tonight. All right. So good evening to you, Facebook, Instagram. Good evening to you. It's good to virtually see you. Do me a favor, uh, fill it up with hearts uh, tonight, and then I want you to tag five people quickly uh, and tell them to tune in. Let's get this party started uh, right on Instagram. Do me a favor, hit that heart button and uh, if you're on Instagram, and then I want you to say good evening in the chat box and then tag five people and tell them to tune in right now. Tonight, we are talking about toxicity, toxic relationships, and um, this is going to be powerful. It will be one of the most powerful lessons I have taught all month long. Um, in fact, probably uh, for this entire year, we've been in this virtual space. It's going to be that powerful. It's going to be practical. And so make sure you say good evening, tag five people, tell them to get on the line right now um, because they will not want to miss this. All right. Um, where am I? Twitter, Periscope, good evening to you. It's good to virtually see you. Uh, tonight and to have you with us. Uh, if you're on Periscope, would you just hold that heart button down, uh, fill it up so that hearts fly all across the screen, uh, and then do me a favor. I want you to hit that at symbol on, on Periscope. I want you to tag five of your Twitter followers uh, and tell them to tune in tonight. Let's get this number rising. Uh, tell them to tune in tonight. We're talking about Jody and Yvette. We're going to deal with toxic relationships, and it's going to be powerful. Uh, it's going to make a whole lot of sense, and it's really going to set somebody free tonight. So hit that love button, Periscope. So good to see you virtually. I want you to also share this video on your Twitter feed uh, so that five of your good friends can tune in and be blessed tonight. Finally, YouTube. Good evening to you. Those of you that are joining us via YouTube, I've already uh, received several requests to do a part two of Rehab After Dark. And so I'm going to look at some dates and get to set. I get that set up really soon. But if you're tuning in via YouTube, good evening to you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Do me a favor. If you are on YouTube, regardless of what channel you're on, I want you to uh, like our channel, uh, subscribe to our channel, uh, and then hit that notification bell so that you receive alerts every time we go live. Uh, but I'm grateful uh, for those of you that are tuned in via YouTube, I've got a lot of people that tune in that are not on social media, uh, the traditional social media networks. And so they tune in via YouTube and they enjoy it. And so I'm so grateful uh, to God for you, uh, for you tuning in. All right. Listen, y'all, it's 714 uh, Eastern time. I've got to get started at 715. I'm giving you 30 seconds now. I need you to tag somebody. I literally need to see you all. I'm looking at the comments now. I need you to hit that at symbol and put some names in there and tell them to jump in the room quickly. We're about to talk about Jody and Yvette, and it's going to make a whole lot of sense. I promise you it's going to make a whole lot of sense. 
And so I need you to tag five people quickly, tell them to tune in um, to this broadcast. And I promise you, uh, it's going to bless somebody in a tremendous way. Have y'all done it? Come on, hurry up and do it quickly because I've got to get started. Um, literally, I've got to get started in 10 minutes now. I've got to get started. And so I need you to tag five people quickly and tell them to tune in. All right, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. I need you to do this. I need you to do this um, quickly. Uh, and it's going to um, bless somebody in a tremendous way. All right, let's get into this. I um, want to talk about um, what I call um, the Jovet syndrome. Uh, I know that that title probably sounds crazy to some of you, <laughs> but I want to talk tonight um, about the, the Jovet syndrome. Jovet is a word I made up. Uh, I want to talk about the Jovet syndrome. Um, and if you've seen the movie Baby Boy, um, then you know probably where I'm going with this. Um, because the movie Baby Boy uh, with Jody and Yvette is a depiction of what we can all clearly define as a toxic relationship. And, uh, and so uh, the Jovet syndrome um, is the term that I've coined. Uh, to help describe the relationship of those of you um, who are in these toxic situations. And, um, and this is going to be powerful tonight. It's going to be honest tonight. It's going to be candid. Uh, and so I need you to prepare some notes right now in the chat line. I ain't got no Bible verses for you. Well, of course, I've always got Bible, but I'm going to give it to you practical tonight um, because many of you um, are in toxic relationships and you don't even realize that they are toxic. And some of you have come out of toxic relationships and you don't even realize that you were in a toxic relationship. And so we're going to deal with some very candid things tonight that will make you think. And uh, I promise you it's going to bless you. All right. So again, we're talking about the Jovet syndrome. I want you to type that in the comments. Somebody's going to, going to see the replay. We're going to talk about the Jovet syndrome, which is the term that I coined for toxic relationships. And it's going to be a powerful thing. All right. The Jovet syndrome is my term for toxic relationships. And let's deal with this. All right. Let me tell you what makes toxic relationships so dangerous. Um, uh, one of the things uh, that makes toxic relationships so dangerous uh, is that toxic relationships, remember the word toxic simply means poisonous, uh, but it doesn't just mean poisonous. It means poisonous in a subtle way, right? And so it's poison um, in a subtle way. It's not always an obvious way. Um, it's poison in a subtle way. And so, so one of the things that makes a toxic relationship so dangerous uh, is that oftentimes when we think about toxicity, they are red flags in a relationship that are not easily no noticeable. All right. They are red flags in a relationship that are not easily noticeable. And oftentimes these red flags are not easy to notice uh, because they are um, set up under the guise. I would not say of love, but I would say of lust. And this is important because love not only covers, but love also deals in honest spaces. So anytime you are in love with someone um, or connected to somebody in a love kind of way, you're also dealing with them, hopefully, in an honest space, because anything short of that falls short of love. Love and honesty belong in the same pace, place. There's nobody that you love that you, you cannot be honest with or you should not be honest with. If you claim to love anybody, there should be a space of honesty with that person that you're connected with and anything short than that then fails to meet the standard of love. Uh, and so then we start getting into other emotions like heavy like and lust and infatuation. Those types of things don't necessarily involve um, honesty. Uh, and so when you are uh, in lust oftentimes or infatuation, um, sometimes you ignore the red flags that would normally be obvious to you if you were operating in love. And so toxic relationships, the easiest way I can describe toxic relationships and make it make sense is that toxic relationships are like carbon monoxide. 
toxic relationships. I want y'all to record this. I'm going to be dropping nuggets tonight. Toxic relationships are like carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is an invisible gas that if it does not receive room to breathe, can kill everybody that it comes across. Um, if you've got a garage, uh, if you've got a car parked in the garage, one of the first things my father and mother taught me when I started driving, I, we moved into this, this house when I was in high school and we finally had a garage. Um, they said, anytime you crank your car, always lift up the garage hand, a door before you crank the car. Why? Because carbon monoxide gets stuck, uh, gets crammed in the garage. And if you inhale it, you can die on contact. Toxic relationships are the same way. Toxic relationships are like carbon monoxide in that it is invisible poison that if in ingested too much or ingested too heavily, it has the ability to kill you. Some of you don't even realize that you are suffocating in relationships and you trying to figure out how the person you love is strangling you at the same time. And the only way the person you love, or I would put a quote around that love, um, that word love, the only person that you love, um, the only way that they can strangle you at the same time is if you are in a toxic situation. Because love doesn't strangle, it heals. Love does not strangle, it, it corrects. Love doesn't strangle, love is honest. Love um, creates a space where honesty then not only thrives, but causes that relationship uh, to, uh, to blossom and bloom. And so if you're in a relationship that's strangling you, you're probably in a toxic relationship, all right? And uh, I'm going to make this make sense. Uh, we're going to get into uh, four signs. I'm going to give you four signs that you're in a toxic relationship. And for some of you, it's going to apply to what you're in right now. For some of you, it's going to apply to maybe something you came out of. Uh, but I'm going to give you four signs that you are probably in a toxic relationship. Um, but I want you to understand this under the guise of carbon monoxide. Um, when you crank your car, even in a garage that has an open door, there's still carbon monoxide floating in the garage, but it is released into the atmosphere outside because the door is open. This implies to us that relationships aren't perfect. Relation, listen to me, relationships that work, that last, are not perfect. They're not perfect. There is even carbon monoxide in a healthy relationship. The difference between carbon monoxide in a healthy relationship and carbon monoxide in a toxic relationship is that in a healthy relationship, there is room to breathe. This is going to bless somebody. There is room to breathe. In a healthy relationship, there are raised garage doors where there is room to breathe. And so challenges don't suffocate the couple or challenges don't suffocate your relationship or issues don't suffocate what you are, who you are connected to. Uh, and so that's the problem with toxicity because oftentimes when you have a toxic relationship, two people don't have room to breathe. They don't have room to operate. And so that poison that is floating around them is literally choking the life out of them, all right? And so I'm going to give you four signs. I feel like I'm going too heavy already. I'm going to give you four signs um, that you may be in a toxic relationship. And if you've seen the movie Baby Boy, a lot of these signs should make sense, all right? Look at this. Number one, sign number one is what I call hot and cold behavior. Sign number one, hot and cold behavior. If you're in a relationship where there is a lot of hot and cold behavior with the person you are in relationship with, it is probably a toxic relationship. Now, some people I've, dis I've discovered because you're probably saying, well, pastor, what if people have a legitimate reason to be hot or cold? I, I don't know if they have a legitimate reason or not, 
But here's one for sure uh, reason that I do know of, and that is oftentimes people are hot and cold in relationships. They are hot and cold with you. Um, they are unsure about you because they're unsure about themselves. And so it is impossible to expect people to be sure about something that they're in when they're not even sure about who they are. I'm going to say that again. It is impossible for sometimes people to be sure about what they are in when they're not even sure about who they are. And so I've discovered that people struggle to make their mind up about you when they probably are trying to figure their own selves out. This is why you should never rush people to be in relationships if they don't know if they want to be in a relationship. Are y'all listening to me? You should never force the hand of somebody to be connected to you when they tell you they don't know if they want to be connected to you. Because I'm telling you, you are setting yourself up for heartache and failure if you try to force the hands of somebody to be sure about you when they're not even sure about themselves, right? And so it does not make them a bad person. It does not make them a bad person, but understand that when you are sure about you, you become sure about everybody else. I'm gonna say that again. When you are sure about you, who you are, then you are automatically sure about everybody else. Why? Because you are so confident, you are so assured in who you are, what you're bringing to the table, what your plans are, what your future looks like. When you solid about who you are, then it becomes easy to be solid about who belongs and who does not. And there's a simple formula. If people don't align with your future, they don't belong. If people don't align with how sure you are about your life, they don't belong. And so you've got to know that we avoid being hot and cold ourselves when we are sure about who we are. Listen, your job is not to go out here and find somebody. Your job is not to go out here and wreck somebody's life. Your number one goal is to go out here before you go out here is to make sure you are sure about who you are. When you are sure about who you are, there ain't no fluctuating. There is no hot and cold. There is no off and on. When you are sure about who you are, you become sure about what you want. Let me talk about pastor because I don't want to make y'all mad. Pastor's so sure about who he is that he automatically knows who and what belongs and does not belong in his life. And so you've got to get to a place where you become so sure about you that you can be who you are. You know what fits. You know what does not. You know what you want. You know what you don't want. You know what makes sense. You know what doesn't make sense. And when you do, there ain't no fluctuating back and forth. See, people who are not hot and cold also tend to be consistent people. And see, one of the, the one of the very dangerous traits of a toxic relationship is inconsistency. I'm going to help you because people can't be consistent with you when they ain't even sure about who they are. Are you listening to me? People can't be sure about their place in your life. They can't be sure about where they want you to be in their life if they're not even consistent about who they are, if they're not even sure about who they are. And so many of you can't see the toxicity, but you can see the inconsistency. And when you can see inconsistency, sometimes that's all you need to see to know that people are not prepared to be sure about who you are. Is this making sense? And so if you are going to be in a healthy relationship, a healthy relationship is neither hot nor cold. And I'm going to talk about this in a second. It's going to shock you. A healthy relationship is neither hot nor cold. A healthy relationship is consistent. I need you to record that. A healthy relationship is neither always hot or always cold. It is consistent. And I'm going to talk about this and explain this in the second sign. But we've got to be careful with this because again, some of you are confusing yourself to all ends because you are trying to make things fit with people 
who are not even sure about who they are. And when people are not sure about who they are, it is impossible for them to be sure about you. It is impossible for them to be consistent with you. And thus we get toxic relationships. One day they love you, the next day they can't stand you. One day they wanna be with you, the next day they cussing you out. You've gotta understand that toxicity is born out of hot and cold behavior. Toxicity is born out of inconsistent behavior, all right? So that's number one. The first sign that you might be in a toxic relationship is hot and cold behavior. Here's the second sign and it connects, all right? Second sign you might be in a toxic relationship is this. Extreme mood shifts in the relationship, all right? Extreme mood shifts in a relationship is probably a sign of a toxic relationship, extreme mood shifts. I'm not talking about having a bad day or having a bad moment every now and then. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about either you are real happy or you real mad, right? You either on one side of the, of the spectrum of the pendulum or the other. This is important. When there is rarely a middle ground, there is toxicity in that relationship, right? And I can even say this to, to those of you, um, I can even say this to those of you um, who are um, in very happy relationships. And I don't want you to, 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 I don't want to lose you here, but just hear me out, okay? Just hear me out. A relationship can be toxic when that relationship, when the two people in that relationship never have a bad day. Listen to me. It's going to shake you. If two people are in a relationship and they never have a bad day, they never fuss, they never fight, they never have a disagreement. They are on the extreme side of happiness as a mood for their relationship. That's also toxicity. Because it is impossible. Y'all don't like this. It is impossible to be connected to somebody who at some point or another does not get on your nerves. It's impossible. And the only way that possibly does not happen is if you connect with somebody who acts just like you. Now, here's the challenge with that. If you connect with someone who acts just like you in the beginning, it's going to be peaches and roses. But the problem is when you introduce other people, other circumstances, kids, other things into your relationship, then it creates dynamics where it begins to expose um, the fact um, you've heard the phrase um, opposites attract. There's a lot of truth, truth to that. And the reason it is, is because if pastor was around somebody like him 24 seven, um, pastor, you, you would get on pastor's nerves. I get on my own nerves. <laughs> there, there, there's some days I get on my own nerves. I, I, I work my own nerves. And so I can't even imagine being around somebody like me all the time. And so People that are even on the extreme happiness side of the pendulum, I'm here to tell you, are in toxic situations because you really don't know what you have until you have disagreement. You really don't know what you have until you you are connected to somebody where you don't see things the same. Things the same. And so I want to say to you that middle grounds, hear me, middle grounds in relationship are important because they create what I call emotional balance. Listen to me, middle grounds in relationships, right? Not being too hot, not being too cold, but being right down the middle. Middle grounds in relationships are important because they create emotional balance. Relationships with middle grounds have emotional balance, which means there are gonna be some days you're gonna fuss fight, you're going to argue, but there are going to be a lot of days that you're happy and that you're doing well. And what those two opposite ends of the, the pendulum do is they create balance where most days you end up falling somewhere in the middle where you may have an argument or two or you may have great um, uh, days of last, laughter, but it balances out. Anytime you have relationships where you have more bad days than good days, it's a toxic relationship 
or you have a relationship where you have more good days. Well, I can't say necessarily more good days than bad days, but all you have are good days and no bad days. You have no middle ground. And so the middle ground is critical because a middle ground is a place of emotional balance. You need to be connected to somebody that you can be emotionally balanced with. Because when you are emotionally balanced with them, you can laugh with them and everything is good. You can cuss, fight and argue with them. Everything is still good. You can laugh and joke with them. Everything is good. You can have a disagreement and have 30 minutes where y'all just need some quiet and cool off time. Everything is still good. Those are relationships that have emotional balance and relationships without emotional balance are toxic relationships. Is this making sense? OK, so we make relationships without emotional, without a middle ground, have no more emotional balance. And if they have no emotional balance, then we are dealing in a toxic situation. All right. So that's that's sign number two. Again, sign number one, hot and cold behavior. Sign number two are extreme mood shifts in the relationship. Now, you know, some of us, especially some of you single folks, before you ask God to send you anybody, you need to ask him to work on your mood shifts. Some of you are incredibly moody. And um, moodiness is a challenge in a relationship. Um, yeah, we got to work on our moodiness. <laughs> OK, again, I'm not suggesting that some days you won't have bad days. I'm not suggesting that some days won't feel better than others. But extreme moodiness is a challenge for any relationship. And um, you're not going to do anything but ruin a good person's life. Seriously, you're not going to do anything but ruin a good person's life. If you cannot get your mood swings under control, your prayer, if you're single, your number one prayer ought to be for you to have enough self-control, emotional balance in your life to where when you are dealing with somebody else, you know how to be hot, cold at any moment, but you know how to swing somewhere in the middle and be consistent. OK. Sign number three. This is one that's going to hit home for some of you. I'm going to warn you heavy. If the kids are watching, cover their ears. Sign number three, that you might be in a, in a toxic relationship is if sex is the only time you get along. Sign number three, that you are probably in a toxic relationship is if sex is the only time you get along. Now, you've seen the movie, baby boy. They're outside fussing. They're coming up the steps. Yvette says, I hate you. Jody says, I hate you too. They cuss and scream in one minute. And then the, the video camera cuts. And Jody is in the box in the bedroom the next minute. That's a toxic relationship. Now, I know I'm going to lose some of you here because some of y'all like that kind of emotional drama. You like the kind of emotional drama where somebody's cussing you out one minute and then smashing you the next. The problem with that is those relationships rarely last. And the reason they rarely last is because you are riding emotional roller coasters. Y'all don't like this. I know you like that kind of, oh, I hate you one minute. I love you the next minute kind of deal. But the problem with that, though, is these relationships that rely on sex as the thing that bonds them tend to also be relationships where there is poor communication. Isn't it funny how a toxic relationship can have great sex, but those two same people struggle to just have a simple conversation with one another without an argument, without cursing each other out, without calling each other names, without laying each other out and, and hanging up the phone. Um, it's funny how people can have sexual chemistry, but have no emotional balance and poor communication. I'm here to tell you that good sexual energy 
good sexual chemistry is not a sign of a solid relationship. I know y'all don't like it. I hear you single people. Well, pastor, that's important to me. They got to be able to do what they do in the bedroom. They got to be able to satisfy me. They got to be able to do all of these things. But let me tell you something. Sexual satisfaction. Let me let me give you guys some free game. Sexual satisfaction, especially from the standpoint of a man satisfying a woman. Sexual satisfaction is 90 percent mental. You're welcome. You're welcome. Some of you guys ought to be cash apping me because I've been helping y'all the last three weeks. Sexual satisfaction for most women from a man to a woman is 90 percent mental. It's 90 percent emotional. That long before you try to rip her insides out, that you emotionally connect with who she is. Because when you do, the sex then becomes easy. In other words, you got to smash her brain before you smash her pants. Y'all want my cash app, fellas? Y'all need it? It's dollar signs there at the third. Some of y'all owe me. Because, because if it is the opposite, if you smash in her pants before you smash his brain, and ladies, I'm coming for you too, because this ain't gender neutral. Because some of you, you ladies got great sex game. If you smash in his pants before you can get into him intellectually, you create emotional imbalance in your relationship and you create toxic situations where the only time y'all will be able to function and get along is during those 30 minutes y'all spending time together in your bedroom. And so I'm here to tell you that if you want something that is going to last, I'm not suggesting that the sex has to be bad. I'm suggesting to you that sex should not be the foundation of your relationship. And that's single, that's married, I don't care what you are. If sex is the foundation of your, your relationship and everything that you all do as it relates to progress revolves around having a good sex life, you are in a toxic relationship. I say that. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all ain't feeling this now because I know some of you got your little list and some of you got, uh, you know, your little manifestation list and you got on there. You want somebody with good sex. That's great. I believe God, universe, whatever you you pray into can give you exactly what you're looking for. But let me tell you something. If good sex is the foundation of your relationship, it will not last. It will not last. It's let me blah, 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 blah. Let me take that back. It's rare when it lasts. We see the end of the movie. Jody and Yvette end up being together. They end up, you know, getting their self together. But that only happened when both Jody and Yvette came to their senses where they had to get their act together. You, you do not arrive to a place where sex is the foundation of your relationship and that relationship lasts without one or both people taking a step back and saying, we got to reconstruct what we build in our relationship on. I want to say this to y'all. If you're in a toxic relationship and the only thing y'all got good is when y'all smash, I'm not saying they ain't the one. I'm saying you might better take a step back so you can reconstruct your foundation. People, I look at my parents who've been married for a very long time. Um, I, I look at other couples that have been married 40, 50, 60 years. God bless them um, for being able to do that. If you talk to any of these folks, yeah, they may have a sex life. But if you talk to any of them, they will tell you that their relationship and the foundation of their relationship is greater than what happens behind closed doors. And all I'm saying to you is talking with your body does not count. Communicating with your body does not count. If you having challenges, just throwing some sex on it does not count. Because if one or both of those people decide to ever grow and mature in that relationship, you will reach a place where even sex isn't enough to keep you in the relationship. A lot of people have left great uh, relation, have left relationships where the sex was great. 
but because they grew, they grew to a place where the sex was not enough to keep them where they were. That's what growth does. So in toxic relationships, those relationships fall apart when at least one person makes up in their mind, I need more than this. The sex is great. You smash my brains out. I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak. But all of that is wonderful. But when all of that is over, if there is no real emotional and mental connection, it's not going to be enough to glue that relationship together long term. So again, I want to say this loud and clear that just because um, you've got that foundation, it does not mean that person might not be the one. If you're single dates, it may not be that person may not mean that that person is not the one. I'm just saying to you, reexamine the relationship and make sure that y'all have a lot in common other than the 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 or whatever minutes you spend together in between the sheets. Because if not, any other kind of foundation, any foundation in a relationship that's built solely on sex, if the only way you communicate well is when you choke in each other, it's not going to work. It's going to be hard for it to work. Unless, again, one person snaps out and says, I need more than this. I think it was Yvette in the movie who snapped out. And said, listen, you got to get out of my house. Jody had to hit a wall to realize what he had. And then it worked out. Right. I know this is movies, TV. This is makeup land. But you get the point. The point is those toxic relationships built on that foundation. No, they cussed each other out on site. Jody was was messing with old teller girl from um, from the uh, from his workplace, uh, from old girls from Yvette's workplace. I was doing all kinds of, of crazy ratchet stuff. They, they had all kinds of, but there was one time they got along. And that's when they were smashing before they eat tacos. So all I'm saying to you is, if it's going to work, and if you're with somebody that you think you truly love, but the only time y'all get along is when you're doing it, take a step back, re-examine the foundation, and try to recreate the foundation. And if the foundation can be rebuilt, and two people can commit to it, it can work. That makes sense. Here's the fourth and final sign that I'll cover tonight that you might be in a toxic relationship. Is this blessing anybody? I hope you guys are liking and sharing and tagging people because this is practical tonight. All right. Here's the fourth sign. This one's going to hit home. You ready? Fourth sign you might be in a toxic relationship is this. When either person cares more about what other people think. When either person in a relationship cares more about what other people think about that relationship, you're probably in a toxic relationship. I'm going to explain this one. This is a head scratcher for some of you right now. I'm going to make it make sense. When either of you care more about what other people think about your relationship, your marriage, whatever you got, you are probably in a toxic relationship. See, with Jody, it was his mama. Jody was a grown man, but Jody was more concerned about his mama's feedback, who, by the way, until she met old Melvin cooking eggs, naked Melvin, before she met him, mama ain't had no man. He based his instruction with all of these, this girl drama that he had on the side, he based his instruction and was more concerned about what his mama thought. With Yvette, she was more concerned about what her friends thought. So it was all about what friends were saying about Jody and all about what friends were, were thought about Jody. And I'm going to just help y'all here. Validation in a real relationship is never external. I'm going to say this again. I'm dropping bombs and y'all not even catching them. Validation in a real relationship is never external. In other words, when two people really love each other for real, you don't seek validation from outside parties. You don't seek validation from outside sources. You don't, you don't seek validation from people who are not in the middle of your relationships. Listen, you are never in a relationship or marriage with your family or your friends. 
I'm going to get in trouble right here. You are never in a relationship that's going to work. You are never in a marriage that's going to work with your family or your friends. If you want a relationship that works, let me give you some good advice. Keep people out of it. <laughs> I'm doing some good teaching. This is just wisdom here. You want a marriage that works? Keep folk out of it. You want a relationship that works and you with somebody that you think you love and you you supposed to be with? Keep folk out of it. Because I'm telling you, when you put people in your stuff, it ruins your stuff. See, toxic relationships got a whole lot of external noise. Family got given their input, friends giving their input, cousins giving them their input, you know, best BFFs giving it, all these people giving their input. But the problem is that input that you receive, that you're bringing back to your relationship is bringing poison to your connection. See, just because they are for you doesn't mean they're going to be for everybody. See, th one of the things that I do. Um, yes, I do marriage counseling. I still do marriage counseling. Ain't nothing changed. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm counseling people, marriages or counseling people in relationships, one thing that I tell, I teach them is, is simple. If you're building a foundation with somebody, you need to keep as many people out of that foundation as possible. Because here's what happens. When you start putting people in your business, you start putting people in your drama, you start putting people in your challenges, you start putting people in your struggle. If you ever bounce back from the struggle, you and that person going to be good. But everybody you put in it will never forget what you told them. <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't like this kind of old fashioned. This is old fashioned teaching here, which is why if you're in a relationship and you think it's a relationship, you're going to salvage. Don't be out here running out people telling people you're single. Just shut up because you might be in a relationship where you might get back with the person. You just need to shut up and until you got some finality on it, because if not, then you, if, if you get back together, you got to go back to everybody. You didn't told you were single and tell them you ain't single no more. Just shut your mouth. Keep family out your relationship. Keep friends out your relationship. Don't put these folks in your in your stuff, because when you do, you are potentially inserting poison. Now, I hear you. Well, pa Pastor, you know, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, they mean well. They give me great advice. I'm not saying they don't mean well. That's not what I said. See, people can mean well when they give you input on your relationship, when they give you input on your marriage, when they give you input on your divorce. So people can mean well. But hear what I'm saying. A wise person will tell you that ultimately you're the one that's got to make the decision. You're the one that's got to live with the decision. So whether it's a relationship or marriage or whatever, you got to live with the decision. And so the way you have relationships that are not toxic is you make up your mind about who you're going to be with. And when you do. And y'all have made up your minds about each other. When y'all have problems, keep everybody else out your problems. And, and I'll do you one better. When y'all having good days, sometimes it's good to keep people out of your good days. Because everybody around you don't want you to have good days with who you with. And so I, I, my challenge with people, <laughs> I, I, I feel my heart goes out. Listen, my heart. <laughs> my heart goes out to those of you who are missing who you could be with because you are entertaining noise that ain't got nothing to do with them. That ain't got nothing to do with your connection with them. And that's toxicity. You are introducing toxic poison into your connection and a healthy relationship Ain't going to be between you and them and their family and their friends. A healthy relationship first, hear me, is first going to start with that person. Because here's the deal, because <clears throat> this doesn't imply, <clears throat> this doesn't imply that a healthy relationship should not include people in your family. That's not what Pastor said. So if you're going to replay the tape, play the whole context. Pastor's not saying it saying that in a healthy relationship, you should not you know, have a healthy connections with that person's family, that person's friends. 
I'm not saying that at all. It shouldn't just be y'all two out here and Al and everybody else over here. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there's an order. And the order is whoever you're in relationship first with, you got to get on the same page with them first. Everybody else secondary. Whoever you're in a relationship first, who you're married with, whoever you're married to first, y'all have to be on the same page first. Because when y'all are on the same page, then everybody else got to fall in alignment with what y'all doing. And that's how you avoid toxicity. That's how you avoid one person caring about what everybody's saying and the other person being all in. No, we either all in or we all out. When, when the two people are on the same page, it builds a healthy foundation of communication. It builds a healthy foundation of teamwork. So that you, when you have that one family, and you will, when you have that one family member that don't like who you with, because everybody not gonna like who you choose. Everybody not gonna like who you. It's okay. You ain't. They ain't sleeping with them. It's all right. Everybody not gonna like who you choose. They not. Everybody not gonna like who you with. But if y'all are on the same page, there's nothing external that can come between that connection. And see, connections get ripped apart by external sources because those connections are not on the same page. So again, four final uh, characteristic of a toxic relationship that I'll mention is when people start to care more about what everybody else is thinking, everybody else is saying, you end up in a toxic situation. You end up in a situ situation where you allow poison to filtrate your relationship. And when that poison filtrates your relationship, it's hard to back, bounce back for that. If you wanna be happy, be happy with who you with. Y'all get on the same page. Make sure it's a great person, a decent person, a decent human being. They're bringing something to your life. They're adding something to your life. And if y'all are on the same page, everybody else got to get in where they fit in. Y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Everybody else got to get in where they fit in. And if they don't fit in, then they can't get in. But you got to get on the same page with the person you choose. And they got to get on the same page with you. That's where it starts. Because when that's the case, when that glue is in place, ain't nothing that can separate that. Yeah, you're going to have a family member or two that ain't going to like the other person. That's fine. Y'all be on the same page. They'll come around. Yeah, you're going to have a friend that's a girl. I don't know about a chosen one, man, dude. I don't know about her. That's okay. Y'all be on the same page. And over time, if the connection is real, if the love is real, it can overcome all of that. Are y'all listening to me? Did this bless anybody tonight? Was this a blessing? I, I hope it was practical enough. Was this a blessing? Did this bless anybody? Did this make sense at all? Some of y'all need to go to YouTube, pull up Baby Boy and watch the movie again. There's a lot of lessons in this movie that I could really pull out that I ain't even really get, get into tonight. And I wanted to keep this at 45 minutes as best as possible. I hope this message bless you. Listen, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want you to type your prayer request in the comments right now. I hope this message was a blessing to you. Um, again, I can't reiterate this enough. Check the foundation of the relationship that you're in. It doesn't mean that the person that you're in that you're having a rocky time with is not the person you have. Um, you're not called to be connected to. But you got to make sure that the foundation is not toxicity. If the foundation is not toxicity, it has a chance to work. It can work. All right. Listen, I want to pray for you. I want you to type your prayer request right now. If you've got a prayer request, I want you to type it in right now. I want those of you. Uh, we had a handful of prayer requests that were sent in on Sunday. I want those of you to know that I have seen your prayer requests. I have not ignored them. Uh, I plan to respond to them this week. If you've got a prayer request that you cannot type in the comment box, I want you to email it to info at rehabcc.org. That's info at rehabcc.org. I get up now every morning, 445. Wednesdays are the only days that I don't get up early. I get up at about six, around six on Wednesdays because it's my off workout day. And really the only one day of seven days that I get to rest. And that's getting up at six o'clock and most of y'all still sleep. Uh, so that's the only day I don't get up early, but every other day, 445, I'm up and I'm praying over your prayer request. I want you to type your prayer request right now in the comments. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your family. I want to pray for your situation. I want to pray for your condition. I want to pray for your relationships. I want to pray for your heart. I want to pray for the things that you desire in your life. Type it in the comments now. If you've got a prayer request that is too personable or too personal, 
you can email your prayer request to info at rehabcc.org. That's info at rehabcc.org. And I would be happy to pray for you, pray for your family, pray for your situation and pray that God answers your prayer. Listen, come on, I'm giving you 30 seconds now. I want you to type your prayer request in the comments uh, so that I can pray for you, so that I can pray for your family. Uh, it is my prayer that in this season that you're in, that God um, positions you to make great decisions, that he positions you to do things with your future in mind, that he positions you to do things that will that will send you the outcomes in your life that you are looking for. I believe that God's still answering prayers. and I believe he's going to answer your prayer. Come on, 15 seconds. I don't see a lot of prayer requests. Come on, I need you to type them quickly. 15 seconds. You've got 15 seconds. Type in your prayer request right now. Um, I, I am praying that God answers your prayer. I just see a prayer request that just caught my eye. I do want to mention that. Thank you, Sister Michelle. Michelle, there's so many people that are still without power. Um, there's so many people um, that are homeless, that are outside in all of this um, in all of this bad weather, in this ice storm that is rock, really the, the East Coast. I am in the South. I'm praying for every person that is in that um, condition, that God would send relief right away. Um, we are certainly praying for that uh, and that he would do it um, sooner than later. Listen, I want to pray for you. Connect your hands like this as a symbol of faith. Would you do that? I want you to connect your hands as a symbol of faith, just like this. Touch and agree with me. We're getting ready to pray together. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for this valuable teaching on toxicity. I pray, God, that something was said um, that has challenged somebody to review the foundation of their relationships, to determine that their relationship, whether or not their relationships are on solid ground so that they can be connected to people that not only they love, but be connected to them in the right way. I thank you, God, because I believe that this message, whether live or through the replay, is going to call somebody to take a few steps backwards so that they can take many more steps forward. Right now, God, we speak against the spirit of toxicity um, and we now speak into the atmosphere, healthy relationships, healthy connections, healthy friendships, friendships that are not even filled with toxicity, friendships that are not filled with hot and cold, often on behavior, but even friendships um, that are consistent, that are emotionally balanced, where two people genuinely love, respect, and admire one another. God, for every prayer request that's come across this line, we speak to it now, that you would answer those prayers, that you would make ways, that you would open doors, that you would meet the needs of your people like never before. Right now, God, for every prayer request that's come across this line, we speak to that request and we ask now, God, that you would put into motion all of the things necessary, all of the elements necessary to bring to the hearts of your people the things that they desire. We thank you, God, because you've given us the ability to attract and manifest things into our lives. And so right now, God, I pray that as we lift these requests up to you, that you would posture our attitude, that you would posture our position in a way that we might be able to receive everything that we desire, that we might be able to receive everything that we expect to come our way. We thank you for these things. And we believe this week to be a week that will be filled with miracles, open doors, made ways, met needs like never before. We count these things done. We believe you for all of them in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, I want you to type in the comments right now. It is so. It is so. It is so. Come on, type it in the comments right now. If you prayed that prayer with me, if you put in a prayer request right now, if you're watching the replay, I want you to type in the comments right now. It is so. God is answering prayers in this season like never before. Come on, type it. I need to see it. Put it in the comments right now. It is so. It is so. It is so. You're saying it's already done. Every time you say amen, you're saying it's already done. Every time you say amen, you're saying it's already completed. It's already happened. And we believe God is answering your prayers. Listen, while you're typing that, if there's somebody that wants to be saved tonight, there's somebody that wants to dedicate their life to Christ. The Bible tells us, Romans 10 and 9, that if we confess with our mouths, if we believe with our hearts that Jesus Christ is who he is, did what he did for us, we are saved. Salvation is a matter of confession. And tonight, somebody heard this message, somebody watched this replay, and somebody wants to needs to dedicate their life to Christ. And I want to give you the opportunity to do that. Listen, I want to give you the opportunity right now to dedicate your life to Christ. If you want to be saved, if you want to commit your life to Christ, it doesn't mean you're perfect. 
You don't even have to be perfect. All you have to be is willing. You have to be willing to turn your life over to him, to acknowledge who he is and acknowledge that he has all power to change and transform your life. And God will do exactly that. Listen, if you want to be saved, I want you to stop what you're doing. Park the car, sit up in the bed, put the fork down at the table. I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to repeat this prayer of faith with me because God wants to save you. Are you ready? Say this with me. I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I have some flaws and I even have some failures. But I do believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, lived on this earth just like I'm living. He suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross. But three days later, rose again for my sins. Because he lives, I can live, and I am saved. Listen, my friends, if you prayed this prayer of faith, I want to congratulate you and welcome you to the royal family of Jesus Christ. You've made a powerful decision, and uh, it is a decision that is not only going to bless you, but it is a decision that is going to pay dividends for your children and your children's children and generations after you. Now, Go find you a church home somewhere. I don't care where you go. I want you to find you a church home somewhere. I want you to dedicate your life to that ministry, your work to that ministry, your time, talent, and treasure to that ministry so that you can surround yourself with other believers and continue to grow in the faith. I don't care where you're living. Find you a Bible teaching, Bible preaching, community outreach-based ministry um, where you can learn and grow. Maybe you're tuned in tonight and you want to be a part of the Rehab Christian Center. I'm here to tell you. I would love to be your pastor. I would love to walk with you during the season of your life as you continue to grow and expand in your faith. Maybe the messages that you've heard, the message you heard tonight was a message that was so practical that you never thought it could come from a preacher. I'm here to tell you, this isn't unusual for us. This is the norm. I believe the word of God should be relevant. The word of God should be something you can apply to your life that will cause you to grow and change and transform your life. I would love to be your pastor. If you want to be a part of our ministry, you should see moderators on the screen now who are imploring you uh, to be a part of our ministry. Just simply like their comment um, and they will reach out to you and get some information from you. And we would love to welcome you to what I call not the largest church on the planet, but by far the nicest church on the entire planet, the Rehab Christian Center. And we would love to have you as a part of our ministry, as a part of our family. All right. Would you do that? Listen, very quickly tonight, I want to challenge you to be a blessing to our ministry. If this message has blessed you, this broadcast has blessed you, if this lesson has blessed you, I want to challenge you to give tonight. I want to challenge you to sow a special seed into our ministry. Uh, If you've been giving um, to us as we have been in this virtual environment, you know, I don't have to sell you on it. This has been virtual. um, This has been fertile ground. And uh, I believe that not just because I'm the pastor, but because I am the pastor of a church, has fed over 20,000 people in less than seven years. We have done so many phenomenal things for our city and community um, that these things are starting to pay dividends for us. And so I want to challenge you tonight to give. You can give one of three ways. Uh, If you don't have a church or ministry, you want to pay your tithes here, we we would certainly allow that. Or if you want to just simply sow a special seed into this word tonight, I want to challenge you to do that so that you can be blessed uh, as a result of this word in this ministry. There are three ways you can give. You can give via cash app at dollar sign, Rehab CC Give. That's cash app, dollar sign, Rehab CC Give. You can give through our website by visiting www.rehabcc.org. That's www.rehabcc.org. Or you can give through your cell phone by texting the word Rehab Works. It's two words as one word. Text Rehab Works to 88202. That's Rehab Works to 88202. And right to your cell phone, you'll see a prompt, follow the prompt, and you can give right from your cell phone. Again, I want to challenge you. There are three ways you can give. You can give via Cash App at dollar sign, Rehab CC Give. That's dollar sign, Rehab CC Give. You can give um, through our website by visiting www.rehabcc. Dot org. That's www.rehabcc.org. Or you can get from your cell phone by texting Rehab Works to 88202. That's Rehab Works to 88202. 
and write to your cell phone. You'll see a prompt, follow that prompt, and you can be a blessing to our ministry that way. Listen, I love you guys. I certainly pray that this message has been a blessing to you. Our numbers are low tonight, but I'm telling you, you ought to share this video. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you might want to share this video because this is one of the most powerful and practical messages we've taught on toxic relationships. And I know these four characteristics are going to bless you in a major way. So do whatever you have to do. Rewind it. Go back and play it again. Share it on your social media networks and streams. And I promise you, it'll not only be a blessing to you, it'll be a blessing to somebody else. All right. I love y'all. I'm praying for y'all. I want you to have a phenomenal week. Do me a favor. Keep, keep praying for Pastor. Uh, and I would really appreciate that. But I'm praying for you. I want you to have a phenomenal week. And I want you to know that God is still answering every single prayer, every single thing concerning your heart's desire. God's making those things happen. All right. Listen, I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Do me a favor. Make sure you tune in Sunday at 9.08 a.m. sharp as we continue our relationship goal series with another very powerful message. And I promise you it's going to bless you. All right. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Peace and blessings. Thank you for watching the Rehab Christian Center Live experience. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you and you would like to be a blessing to our leader, Dr. Zeb Talley III, you can sow a seed into his ministry by cash app at dollar sign Pastor ZT3. It is our prayer that this message of hope encouraged, enlightened, and empowered you to be better. Please tune in Sunday at 9.08 a.m. for our Sunday morning experience. And as always, be blessed and have a wonderful week.